The game is about an alternative interpretation of the history of mankind. The whole mystery of Drowned God is based on um, Atlantis and the position of these star constellations that form the same constellation as the Giza pyramids, the, the, the ground layout. It's a puzzle game. Basically, it, the whole thing is unlocking a gigantic secret. Um, and the game is thought about as a as a long crescendo from near ignorance into initiation and a new knowledge, which is genuine. You leave the game significantly with more between your ears and in your heart, maybe, than you had when you started it. It's about um, the great figures of mankind and how they fit into a conspiracy that has been going on since um, prehistory. And um, really what we're doing is unravelling um, this incredibly intricate conspiracy. Um, and the conspiracy literally goes from, um, the, from the flood through the, May, uh, the Mayan era, the Egyptian era, um, and all the way up to the present day, including people like uh, Leonardo, Einstein, a lot of the, the, the greats of mankind. In the chess said realm, it mainly deals with the Mayan pyramids, the Bermuda Triangle, the Scorpio sub, the Philadelphia experiment. The second realm, Binar, is the air realm that deals very much with the Arthurian legend of the Grail, the um, Stonehenge, um, the site of Merlin's Wood, um, through to Din, which is the mechanistic world. Um, of the 18th century enlightened, the Jules Verne's, if you like, their vision of what the future world might look like, um, through to the fire realm, Chokma, which is based in the four corner area of the United States, underground bases, um, the Great Pyramids at Giza. It is linear if, when you are going through each of the realms that the player has to go through, but within each of those realms, then it's almost completely non linear so you can wander around any environment that you like. It's going to be uh, a, a question of navigating your way through history and hopefully coming out the other end. Above all, there is an ongoing story in there that doesn't get finished within this game. I believe that Eden refers to Atlantis. This is all left of field stuff, I, I know that, but it happens to be what I believe in. Drowned God is, um, has an elliptical meaning which covers a number of possible points. It could mean Atlantis, the fabled uh, 
empire that was um, submerged by the sea. It could mean the loss of ancient knowledge that was um, the original property of the ancients. But what was interesting is that most of the characters that we chose were members of a secret organization called the Priory of Sion, or so it's claimed, and that goes from Leonardo da Vinci through to Isaac Newton. Newton and Einstein, a couple of uh, argumentative old scientists, uh, a treatise to a few of their disagreements. Horus from the Isis and Osiris legend. Victor Hugo. Quetzalcoatl, the Aztec Mayan god. There is an enormous amount of interest, um, books, films, all the internet uh, um, inquiries and, and websites and all the rest of it, about these very subjects. Um, and uh, I think it is very good timing, especially around the millennium. I don't know whether it's millennial fever or what it is, um, but there are a huge number of people out there who are interested in this area. The objective of the game is to regain these four lost artifacts and through uncovering the security puzzles that have been placed around each artifact. The player, with the aid of certain characters, by moving through the miasma of lies and deceptions, is able to, ro to locate each relic, take it back and install it inside the bequest globe. There is danger aplenty, and if you're not careful, you could get a very bad shock or two. I don't think it's likely to be fatal, but then, who knows? The original idea um, was uh, by Harry Horse, um, and uh, he, Alistair Graham, who's the art director, and myself have been um, really collaborating on this for a long time. But Harry does most of the, the writing. My job before was, a, was a, I was a political cartoonist. That's how I made my living. And my editor, um, I think, was confounded a lot of the time by the fact that I did have a lot of alternative conspiracies about what was happening in politics. And some of those conspiracies were right. I mean, they weren't dreamt up by me. They were believed by um, uh, good journalists. The majority of what I do is to... Um provide the material that the three-dimensional, the 3D guys, the modelers and the computers, um, give them the raw material which they can then make, i.e. the environments in the game. When I put my piece down, all I wanted to do was go home and go to bed. My car was blocked in, and I was wandering the studio corridors, and I heard this wonderful music coming from one of the studios. I put my head around the corner and I met Will Joss from Miasma. And I said to him, uh, you have to write music for this game. Essentially what we're doing is either building the characters directly into um, Soft Image, which is the software that we're, we're, we're using to, um, to, to do the game, the 3D elements of the game, or we are using his um, sculpts we're scanning those on a very, very high resolution uh, digital scanner. Um, and then we are using um, those wire mesh models. Um, we're then uh, texturing those and then attaching the motion capture data that the Plant Brothers have uh, provided um, to make the, the uh, characters animate. What we've been after again is uh, as uh, close to total immersion in the game as possible. The look of Drowned God is um, photographic realism. Fantastic in, this, in the sense of its fantasy, but it's also rather good. Fantastic photorealism. We have um, a whole uh, army of uh, computer animators and uh, 2D artists um, who are actually putting together the images that you'll see on the screen. The one coming off of there. Yeah. So I've these extremities for that.
it works uh, by having seven cameras arranged in a circle. So the um, the uh, performer, the actor that's going to be reading the lines next door, um, will have a, a ring of cameras all around him. You'll see he also has uh, lots of little spots stuck onto his face, uh, and that th that's the mechanism whereby the, the movement is translated into inside the computer. There are seven cameras, and they're all calibrated together. So that means that each camera knows exactly where it is precisely in relation to the next camera, so that when the data comes in to the machine, uh, it's much easier for it all to get uh, to get reprocessed and brought together as, as basically one marker set, which is what you see over here. This is actually the, basically the raw data as it comes out of the machine. Um, this is partially reconstructed. And what we've done here is um, basically done a dot to dot joining the dots. So we can actually just see that there's uh, continuity between markers. What can happen sometimes with this type of system is that um, markers get naturally occluded. Right? They get covered. So you know, for example, if you're doing a game, you have a wrist marker here, another hand goes up in front of it, you'll lose that marker momentarily. Um, and what, what has to happen in the post-processing stage is that you have to go in and, and f basically fiddle around with it and join the dots up so that the, uh, you have marker continuity. So you don't get any nasty jumps or glitches in the, in the animation. Okay. So we need, we need a, a, um, a wide variety of voices that sure. go through. So, um, and you can see on page 11, these are sort of um, these blip ads, you know, again, this is voice over commercial stuff, so you should sure. sort of put yourself into that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, when we feel tired and run down, it's just our body's way of saying, yay, give me a break. Hey. <laughs> well, we've made that break, and it comes in four new delicious flavors. Yeah, That's that, exactly that kind it. of really. Yes. Uh, I was going to use super glue, but they wouldn't let me. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what else we've got here. Switch that on a bit harder. That's it. Again, same. Make sure it's on the tight side. It's on its side. Crashed. No. So is is that motion? Is the motion capture working okay? Coming, everything? just coming. Yeah. yeah. We've got one up on oh. the screen. Cool. And it's working. It's not too shabby. The passing of time is an illusion. In reality, the past, the present, and the future are one. The Grail is a device that brings these different states of time to the holder's film. Be careful with the Einstein that you don't make him too um, in the back of the throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah just okay. beca because he's quite a nice guy, so keep it sort of yeah. um, that gravel. Um, there, it was better than your damn apple puzzle. It's better. That's the problem. Let me hear that back, Dave. Please let me take them off. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've grown quite used to it. Do you mind if I keep them on for the rest of the day?